What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Part 5. Please relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, you could subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. I used to have an incredibly chill, skittish little Siamese cat. Not a fighter. Not a ruffian. She would hide under the bed when anyone but me was in the house. Landlords and repair workers would say, I thought you said you had a cat. But she was extremely loyal to me and bonded to me. I was living in an attic apartment where the front door opened onto stairs. And then the stairs went straight up into the living room. One night she is standing at the foot of the stairs inside the house, yowling her fool head off, just howling and yowling and really going to town. I'm half asleep and listening to her and wondering WTF, wishing she would stop. Then I hear it. A hand grabs the doorknob and turns it. Click, turns it again, click. Turns it again, click. Someone is quietly but forcefully trying to jimmy open the door by twisting the doorknob hard in the middle of the night. Boom! I'm awake. My feet are on the floor. I'm like immediately vertical. And my cat races to the top of the stairs, looks me in the eyes and falls silent. She had done her job and gotten my ass up. This is about two. E or zero a.m., and my boyfriend at the time would sometimes come home super late from his overnight job. So the first thing I do is call him and whisper, asking him if he's trying to get in the front door. He says, what? Fuck no. Call the cops now. Turn on all the lights in the house, make noise, get off the phone with me and call the cops. Then call me right back. I do that. And the doorknob stops. The cops come and search the area and the block and find no one. It never happened again. After that, I also barricaded the door. I'll never forget that what could have been an extremely dangerous, if not potentially brutal situation in the middle of the night, was foiled by my gentle little scaredy cat pussy cat with big saucer eyes who was terrified of her shadow. But when shit got real, she woke my ass up. I couldn't have asked more of a dog. Cats are badass, never doubt it. My girl has gone on across the rainbow bridge as they say, but I'll always treasure her loyalty and intelligence in this. Account 2. From an article, the Red Army pushed west and a Soviet soldier shot him in the chest. Derlewanger survived and went into hiding. French authorities later captured him in Altshausen in southern Germany after the war. They tossed him into a camp to await trial, but he never made it. The French authorities at the time claimed Derlewanger died of natural causes. But the man's cellmate said he watched as Polish guards beat him to death. If Polish guards did beat him to death, then it was an appropriate end to one of World War II's most savage war criminals. Account 3. A high-priority inmate who could implicate dozens of wealthy and powerful people apparently committed suicide while on suicide watch at his prison. And the footage can't be found due to a malfunction of the camera. But the news told me that's how it happened and the news is never wrong. Account 4. Japanese war crimes in WW2, that is my real answer, but it does remind me of that movie with Paul Rudd, where they're talking about scary stories around the campfire, and he says something like, everyday children like you are kidnapped and sold into child sex trafficking rings. Account 5. During WASU, an American airplane crashed near the Japanese island of Chichijima. There were nine servicemen on board. One was rescued by an American submarine. The other eight were taken in by the Japanese. Don't want to go into all the details, but through some time and events, the Japanese ended up eating those servicemen. But that's not the weird part. The one serviceman who was rescued, that was George H.W. Bush, Google, Chichijima incident. For more details if you'd like. Account 6. A headless, limbless torso was found in the bushes at the rest stop in the town where I grew up. They never found the rest of her body parts or the murderer. She wasn't even identified until about a decade later. She was a prostitute that had been estranged from her family. My mom's theory is that a truck driver from out of state did it, dismembered her, dumped her torso at the rest stop, and scattered the rest of her over state lines. Could have been an isolated incident or it could be a serial killer. We might not ever know. Account 7. My great uncle was captured by the Japanese. He never really talked about it, except for one night when he had a drink and told my dad and granddad that they'd just decapitate people all the time. 
That's about all he ever said on the subject, but it clearly deeply affected him for the rest of his life. Account 8. This is gonna make this even creepier. There is a gas station in Odessa, Delaware, and kinda across from it is a small wooded area. Just down the road is a state police troop station. So back in the 90s, I used to hit up this gas station every day on my way to and from work, did one hour commute each way. One day I went to work, stopped, it was raining, and I had to park a bit from the store part and walk in. I got a flat and didn't realize it. But when I was pulling out, some guy told me about the flat. And to follow him, I told him, no. I turned around and went back to the gas station and called my dad and waited in the station. Now here is the creepy part. A few months later, they found a woman. His torso in the woods across the way, they have never, ever, ever ID'd her. She was even featured on one of the last episodes of America's Most Wanted. I could have been her. I think about it from time to time. If I had accepted help from this random guy, did he puncture my tire on purpose, all that stuff? Account 9. On May 31st, 2014, two 12-year-old girls lured their friend into the woods and brutally stabbed her in an attempt to summon or appease Slenderman a fictional internet villain who is said to inhabit wooded areas and stalk his victims among the trees. Account 10. A pub in Colnbrook, Berkshire in UK has a pretty terrifying history. The ostrich has seen its fair share of murders, and they say that over 60 were committed here. Most famous of all were those committed in the 17th century by the landlord of the time, Jarman, who with his wife made a very profitable sideline by murdering their guests after they had retired for the night, they had a trap door built into the floor of one of their bedrooms, and when a suitably rich candidate arrived, Jarman would inform his wife that a fat pig was available if she wanted one. She would reply by asking her husband to put him in the sty for till the morrow. The bedstead was hinged, and they would tip the sleeping victim into a vat of boiling liquid immediately below, thus killing him. Account 11. One night about two years ago, I believe it was spring, and it was about 9 or 10 at night. A bit of context, my mother is a photographer, and she has one of those big, expensive cameras. Now I was just sitting in my room playing Xbox with my buddies, and I heard the commotion of my family in the doorway to the backyard, the kind of commotion of people gawking, so I went out to see what it was all about. I go to my dad and ask what it is, and he says there's something in our backyard and my mom is out there trying to get pictures but her flash isn't working, and she's right at the fence trying to get pictures. And all of a sudden the flash goes of and lights up the pitch black yard and right in front of my mom is a bear stood up on its back legs just standing there. By the time the flash was done, my mom was nearly in the house. Account 12. There was an article I saw recently in Canada, I think where there was huge petition to start fining people, their offense, 911, or whatever they are called there, were receiving a large amount of calls from people angry that their phone was going off at like 2 in the morning for an amber alert. I cannot wrap my mind around calling 911. Getting an emergency dispatcher to complain about a sound, and on top of that, it ties them up from other calls, which is the reason for the fine. Edit. While I stand by my stance of Don T. Call 911 to complain, I have since learned that you cannot disable these alerts. So I am more understanding of the issue, but not of how people are responding to it. Account 13. The Battle of Osowiec Fortress, 1915. German troops attempted to gas the Russian defenders out, as the fort had been a thorn in the side of the Germans since the outbreak of war. The gas succeeded in killing almost three whole companies. The Germans then advanced across the fields, expecting the fortress to be empty and an easy victory from within the fortress. Russian troops emerged, coughing up blood and lung fragments, covered in bandages made up as improvised gas masks, as well as chemical burns. They returned rifle and light artillery fire at the advancing Germans. The German troops didn't bother firing back as they just ran back to their lines. Their commanders claimed, they're already dead. Give it 20 minutes and go take the place, to which the soldiers remarked. It is not men protecting that place, but the devil. Osowiec Fortress never fell during the war, as when the German troops went back months after there was already fresh defenders. I know this story is much different to the ones other people have said, but it's the one I could think of as truly terrifying. 
Account 14. Well, I'm a bit late, and I'm not sure if anyone posted this already, but the story of Hisashi Aochi, he suffered radiation exposure so thorough his DNA was destroyed and he probably would have died in a matter of days or even hours. But doctors kept him alive for almost three months. He was conscious and begging for death as his body literally fell apart. Account 15. It happened to my mom's friend a couple of years back. She was driving on the highway in the middle of nowhere, as in far away from any town. Suddenly a car that is passing on her left steers fully to the right in front of her, causing her to brake and steer very rashly. This obviously causes her to lose control and crash against a tree. She passed out and sometime later, she couldn't really tell how much time passed. A group of Brazilians, all of this happened in Portugal, came to her rescue and told her things like, don't move, we're calling an ambulance, just hang on there, etc. She eventually passes out again. And about two hours later, someone else comes and starts helping her again, and eventually the ambulance and her husband arrive. She tells them that some other people have been there before, but the guy that found her says no one was there. When they checked the trunk, everything had been stolen, including computer, camera, etc. She later said that she remembers thinking the car that made her crash had been following her for a while and driving a little too close. Make of that what you want.